part of what makes Jordan special to me, and I think part of what really defines Jordan, is a commitment to certain timeless ideas. The idea that you can slow down and have a great meal with a really great bottle of wine that really goes well with food. The idea that you don't have to chase the latest trends in anything, especially in wine, which Jordan never has. The idea that you can just believe in something, something can just exist in its own right because it has value. And there are certain traditions which are really worth holding on to in an increasingly fast moving, fad driven world. We like to think of Jordan not just as a business or a place or a bottle of wine, but as an institution that stands for something. There are certain things that Jordan will always be in that will always define us. That is the emphasis on balance, the emphasis on quality. We're making a statement about a certain style of wine, a commitment to a certain way of life, a singular notion in an increasingly corporatized world. What made Jordan successful in its early years was that Jordan made a promise to the wine drinking public. And that is, we're going to make a quality wine of balance. It is not going to have too much alcohol. It is going to be more French in nature, and it will make the chef look good. Over the next few years, as the early 80s turned into the mid 80s, as my sister came of age, my parents thought it would be, wouldn't it be a wonderful thing to expand upon the Jordan traditions of Cabernet Chardonnay and hospitality and add a sparkling wine. Thus was born the idea of J by Jordan. And my sister ultimately made that her own. But J has always been literally a sister company and champagne or sparkling wine has always been a part of who we are. In many ways, when my sister announced the sale of Jay in early 2015, I was surprised. Even though it was my sister's company, it created something of a void. We needed to do something to bring back the tradition of champagne or sparkling wine here at Jordan. And we didn't know exactly where to go or how this journey was going to end up. But it seemed to us that the beginning ought to be in the birthplace of some of these great traditions. France. Around the time we lost Jay, I was traveling to France, as I often do, and I went to Paris to visit my dear friend Tim Johnson, the founder of Juvenile's Wine Bar. I told Tim that Judy had just sold Jay, and truthfully, really the only sparkling wine that really gets me excited is champagne. So I asked him, do you know someone that produced the champagne that would fit in with the Jordan style? And he immediately said, you need to go only to one family, Anne and Antoine Melisania of A.R. Lenoble. I'll put you in touch with them. The next day, I was driving to the village of Damery, and within five minutes, I knew this was the right connection. When Antoine and Anne came on in the mid-90s, they wanted to raise the level of quality, the level of, of success much, much higher. The very same thing happened in 2005 when John Jordan came on. He wanted to take the wine to a different level. They both share the same kind of philosophy. Every day has to get better than next. All that attention to detail, and they're striving to increase the quality. That attentiveness really, really is what adds to the vision and the future of success for these two products. One of the things that Anne, Antoine, and I share is the understanding that with quality comes sacrifice. Whatever doesn't meet their standards, whether it's grapes, juice, wine, or barrels, they don't use it. We're the same way at Jordan. The first time I tried Lenoble Champagne, it blew me away. I was amazed. The similarities, even though it's champagne, their approach to elegance, refinement, balance, intensity of fruit, is so much like Jordan wines. We make a Chardonnay and a Cabernet. There is a Champagne, it's certainly a sparkling wine, but their philosophical approach to the wine certainly was expressed so well in the wine, it just, like a light bulb went up. I 
Ahmad Rafael Grazer, my great grandfather, was a wine merchant in Alsace. And in the middle of the First World War, he decided to leave his region of birth and move to Champagne. He moved to Damery, a small village close to Epernay, and set up a champagne business uh, at the end of the First World War. And he started producing champagne in 1920, so almost one century ago. He thought that Kraser was not a good name for champagne. So that's why he created the brand name R.R. Lenoble. R.R. for his initials, Armand Raphael, and Lenoble in tribute to the nobility of the champagne wines. After the Gulf War, a very hard crisis hit Champagne, and most of the family-owned Champagne houses have been sold to big wine and spirit groups. But our father asked his three children if anybody of them wanted to take over, otherwise the house would be sold. And my oldest brother was a doctor and surgeon, and my youngest brother was too young. I was the only person in the position to take over. I had to decide what I wanted to do with the house at Erna Nob. I thought that would be very important to keep the family estate in the family for another 100 years. Three years later, my brother Antoine joined me. We have strong convictions. We are doing everything without any compromise. Being small in the champagne world is not the most difficult. The most difficult is to remain independent. Because we always wanted to control our own decision, to say no or yes or what and where and who and why, we always thought, OK, we go a bit slowly, we go step by step, but each euro we invest, we have earned by yourself. It doesn't come from outside, from investors or from bankers. We remain small because I just want to produce high quality product. We have never been tempted by trendy labels or any other gimmicks. We always focused on quality. The first time I met Rob here in Champagne, I immediately liked the man. I liked him because he's a very simple man, he's a passionate man, and our relationship has been immediately easy and obvious. So I thought we are just people to do something together. And this is how the idea of a Jordan Cuvée was born. We have so much in common. We are both quality focused. We are both independent small businesses. And we feel that those values should be celebrated in a world where so many wineries are being sold to corporations. The Jordan Cuvée is 100% produced by A.R. Lenoble and Champagne. I love that we can share their wine with our guests through this special selection of non-vintage brut from their cellars. They are the experts in making balanced champagnes with intense fruit character. The Jordan Cuvée is, of course, similar to the Lenoble style. It's a real mature wine and still freshness. The acidity is there to support the wine. It's not only bubbles. After the bottling, the wine stay on the lids minimum four or five years. That's so important to be patient. The minimum legal in champagne for non-vintage champagne is only 15 months. If you want mature wine, three, four, five years is, is a minimum and we had usually less five grams per liter of sugar. We want rich and complex wine, but still fine, elegant. Rob Davis and me, we share a lot of values. He doesn't focus on the analysis, absolutely not. He focuses on the palate, like I do. We were out in the vineyards together, and Antoine said, elegance, what I'm trying to achieve in a wine is elegance. That's what another thing that blew me away. All of the decisions we make, both in crafting wines that express the terroir we make with our palates, there are no numbers that we go by. Our lab is our palate. 
What's very important to me is acidity. Acid is the backbone of this wine. It's the spine of the wine. It's, it's the soul of the wine. So much depends on the acidity of the wine, and that dictates really more how we pick the wine toward that, much more than alcohol, much more than sugar. We look for the acid because that truly is the backbone that expresses all the other fruit characteristics that were known for both his Champagne and for our Chardonnay and Cabernet. What makes me most excited to be working with Lenovo is their approach to creativity. This is an opportunity where I can really share in all the aspects of winemaking the same thing that we do. This sense of creativity, this sense of always wanting to become better. It's incorporation of all their empirical wisdom. We're not just talking about the 40 years like Jordan. We're talking about the 100 years. This is fourth generation Melissang family. That is so cool. I can't wait for the next 10 years, the next 20 years to be working with them. France has always been a part of our hearts. France has always been our inspiration, and it's really exciting, this journey. A journey we never expected to take has taken us home.